Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Cocktails and Rocktails with me, your most notorious groupie, Allison Rouse, and author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me, that's right. And also, these little books right here, available in ebook form only, because they are too short to be a paperback. But please buy them. It helps support the channel. So buy my cheap little books here. They're fun reads. Take them with a tongue-in-cheek attitude. They're just silly. So anyway, and always thank you guys who are here, who are supportive, who are just such amazing at building this community here with me. Thank you so, so much, you guys. Truly, it means the world to me. So, and today's topic, we are going to go and talk about a little book. Another book that I am in that is not about me, but this one right here. The Ox by Paul Rees. Hmm. We're going to get into this book because there's a lot to be got, gotten into about this. It's created a really stupid backlash and stuff like that, but we'll get into it today. And today's cocktail is going to be the Blood Ox because there's going to be some blood drawn today. And you know, John is the ox. And I love this picture of him. Mm. People wonder why I was so attracted to him. Look at the man. This one, pretty good looking, but this one hot. All right. So everybody, grab your oxes, kick up their feet, and let's have a little cocktails and rocktails, shall we? Cheers, big ears. Okay, not bad, not bad. Definitely would rather swallow this than Kip Winger. But yeah, I'm not a big rum fan, but and this is a really rum-based cocktail, but really good, actually. So everybody, I highly recommend. The recipe is down in the description, so go hit that up. And everything you need is down in that description. From where you can get my books, to my merchandise, to Patreon, to all kinds of things. So go down, you guys, because you know how much I love it when you're going down. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about this little book by Paul Rees. Let me give you a little bit of background on who Paul Rees is. Paul Rees was a music journalist. Yeah, I'm going to use those quotes. And also he was editor or something of Classic Rock Mojo Q Magazine and also there when I sued Roger Daltrey. And I've already posted about suing Roger Daltrey and Paul Reese was absolutely aware of this and who I was and everything. And my book was out for several years before this book was written. So that's kind of the background on this because there's some pretty half truths, unknown um, things said in this book that pretend they're the truth, but they're nothing like it. So that's kind of the background. My book was already out for several years. Paul Rees knew who I was. And there was a couple people in this book that refused to be a part of it. And that would be Cy Langston, Roger Daltrey, and Pete Townsend. Cy Langston is a key name here. Because we've heard, we've all heard me talk about Cy. He was John's best friend. Another key word right here, best friends. Since they were kids, he was an early producer of the Who uh, music and stuff and was John's lifelong personal assistant on and off the road and business, business manager as well. So he was constantly taking care of John. And like I said, Cy and John were friends since they were kids since primary school. So this is also part of the keywords. Now, this book was written on, John was about to start his own biography. That was one of his projects that he was going to do once The Who was done with the tour in 2002 when he passed. And it, for those of you who don't know, I am the woman that was with John Entwistle when he passed away in Las Vegas. Because I know there's a lot of people that are just joining me that are from my TikTok and stuff. So don't really haven't gotten that far into my videos yet so I am the woman that was with this man when he passed away legendary rocker from a band called The Who so I was very very 100% known who I was that I existed and my name was out there I'm on John's Wikipedia page for fuck's sake but so John had started just writing on notepads different things that he, when he would get ideas and stuff, and he did it in front of me about his biography. So he would kind of just start writing stuff down. So there was all these notepads, kind of a little bit on the computer, but it was old school computer. 
<laughs> stuff like that. So there was kind of a lot of information that John left, but probably not even half a book's worth. And that's what it was built on with Christopher, his son, um, his first ex-wife, Allison, which I will refer to her as the first Allison. I am the last Allison. So, so it was kind of, and then Steve Luongo, who claims to be John's best friend, they, I'm not trying to disintegrate their friendship because they did have a very tight, long-term, close friendship. But to me, Cy was John's best friend because Steve Luongo's um, 12 years in his life was very, very different from John's 45 years. Or Cy's 45 years in John's life. So, best friend of 12 years, great friend for 12 years, okay. Best friend... No, I would give that to Cy. And here's why. Because I think a lot of what goes into this book about John's life on the road, a.k.a. how he met me, which we all know because I've posted it, I met John backstage on tour with The Who in 1989 in Boulder, Colorado. I was not a stripper. I've already posted about this. Um, I'll put a link down in the description to that video. So I, I was 19 years old. I, or no, I was still 18. It was a couple weeks away from my 19th birthday. And I was not a dancer until I was, this was 1989 when I met John and I did not start dancing until 1991. So a couple years later. So when I met John, I was not even a dancer. And it says in here that he and I met at a strip club. No, that did not happen. And to me, that makes it sound like a very seedy situation, which it was not. Like I said, we met backstage normally like people do. In fact, here's the picture of when we met, of him seeing me for the first time. A roadie took this picture and gave it to me sometime later after it was developed and stuff. So anyway, that's kind of one of the misconceptions about how we met. And I think that, I think, I don't know if that came from Chris or Steve Luongo, his son. I kind of have the inkling that it came from Steve Luongo because Steve just kind of is like, oh, I was his best friend. I know everything. Really, sweetie, because you sure as fuck didn't know about me and about three other women on the road that he had for a long time. Cy did, though. Cy Langston did. Who chose not to participate in this book. And he even said it on my, uh, my, on my, Facebook page, MySpace, oh my god. Isn't Facebook becoming MySpace though? But anyway, he even said it when I had seen this book and I was like, oh, what do you mean we met in a strip club and I went home with him? That makes it sound like a hooker, prostitute, murderer, druggie, which we all know how I feel about that. I've been called that for 20 fucking years. And because of this book, it's continuing because of that. And it infuriates me. Now also, after it came out, Cy and I were talking because Cy and I stayed friends. We were talking about a lot of other half-truths in this book. Like I said, with Steve Luongo, I think a lot of that came from him. I'm not 100% sure, but Paul Reese could have done five minutes of research. Googled, woman with John Entwistle the night he died. Blam, there I am, Alice Rouse, there's my book. There I am on his Wikipedia page. There I am, tabloids that I was in in the past are still around pictures, everything. So he chose not to do this five minutes worth of work and to believe Steve Luongo or Chris, which Chris might have said it too. And Chris didn't know either, but they did say that he had met me before. He I, he was with someone. I know this is what Chris said, that he had met me before. So I appreciate that because a lot of people didn't know how long I knew John for 13 years. So but I don't appreciate being said we met in a strip club and I went home with him at a strip club because that makes me sound like a hooker, which I've proven legally time and again that I'm not. I never have been and have no intention to be. So that kind of pisses me off about this book and I just feel like there's so many things that were left unsaid and that were very, very biased opinion to those who didn't know him. And like I said, the one person that really would have made this book full and closer to the true story posthumously would have been Cy. But again, he refused to participate in it. And I love Cy. I miss him so much. He unfortunately passed away um, a couple years ago almost. 
And I miss him so much because he was the one person that really knew the whole story. And not just with my story of John and I, but with the, the John had many women he kept out on the road. Ladies, I know you're pissed off because you're never going to be associated with him publicly, but don't be so pissed off about that because we all had long term and I, a lot of them don't like me because I am part of this book and I am an actual public fact to John's life and death. So I get some girls that hate me on the John fan pages on Facebook and stuff that tell me that I can't talk like that. And I understand their frustration, but their frustration is it shouldn't be aimed at me. What they're really pissed off about is a couple of them were like, well, I loved him so much. He was going to see me on this tour. Well, John told us all something different. I was packed and ready to go on the road on that last tour with John. So I don't think he would have seen certain women. Maxine, his ex-wife, yeah, she would have still come to the show and hung out and had a good time and probably been nice, whatever. I don't know. But the other ladies who were the secret ladies that thought they were all the special ones, that they had this big, crazy love and whatever. I cannot say what your relationship was, but I can say what mine was as well. And you can't be pissed off at me for that because I knew about you guys. That was one thing that Sai and I always had between us. And John as well. We were honest. I did not talk about other musicians, but John knew. We have mutual, I fucked some of his mutual friends. So to the other ladies, I'm sorry that you're grasping to be relevant in his life story when it comes to the book and after he passed and stuff. That shouldn't make, that shouldn't be a big deal because you were relevant to his life on the road. And there's a life that musicians have on the road and their life at home and they rarely enter cross. He didn't take you home. He wasn't going to. He had crazy Lisa. Another crazy Lisa at home. So, and you can talk, you know, it, because John would not end one relationship without having another woman there. Like when him and for the first Allison divorced, he was already involved with second wife, Maxine. When him, he and Maxine were falling apart, he was getting involved with his last relationship, Lisa. And Maxine had her faults too. And rightfully so. I'm not one here to say what their dynamics were or who was right or wrong in their relationships. It's not for me to decide. All I know is that I was important to John, and so are these other ladies. So don't hate on me, and I'm sorry you're not in this book, but trust me, you don't want to be because it's not a truthful account. It's an account based on his own writings, and that some could say, well, because I was on the road with him, this is what I think. So this is really not as much as a memoir as it is kind of a guessing game as to what was really going on in John's life. Because I can assure you, how John and I met in this book is not how we met in real life. So, you know, when you guys are reading this book, I, I don't want you to buy it because, like I said, it's really not a true account of not only how John and I met, but also how John passed away. He did not, there's only one person that can talk about that, and you're looking at her. Did Paul even attempt to reach out to me? No, he did not. So as far as I'm concerned, this book is slanderous and defamatory at best. Because he could have taken the five minutes to research me, reached out to me, or just read my book and been like, oh. Because like I said, my book and the knowledge that I knew John since 1989 was out for several years. Probably about five years before this book even came out. So there is plenty to go around. Not just to research what, you know, what happened between me and John. But what others were saying about John. Like they didn't talk to a lot of their friends. Suze and uh, Brian and stuff. There was a lot more friends that I knew about that he didn't, that Paul didn't talk to. So I just don't feel, if you're reading this book, really take it with a grain of salt. And act like it's the kiddie pool, kiddie pool and you only go ankle deep. Because it's not the truth. 
in several ways. In the, how, in the night he died, like I said, there's only one truth about how John died, and that's in my book. This one. And how John and I met. So if you guys, you Who fans, want to know the truth about how John and I met and how he, what really happened the night he passed, either buy my book or go watch it because I've posted it. I've posted it here. And this, it kind of makes me mad because this perpetuates me being a novelty in the greatest death in rock and roll history. It perpetuates a lie. It perpetuates what John would not want. And that's me being abused. Because whenever I had just had some guy on Instagram, I was like, oh no, don't. And he's like, well, who the fuck are you to be dis discriminate or to be degrading this book? I'm like, bitch, I'm the, I'm the bitch that was with him the night John died. So this is just a book to you. This is a portion of my life in this book. So you want to know the truth? It's not here. This is perspective and people's opinions. So that's what I have to say about this book. Like I said, he didn't even contact me. So about how John died is not the truth either. There's a lot of stuff that's not the truth in this book. You know, things that went on with Lisa. Nobody liked Lisa. She was fucking insane. How John stayed with her for 13 years, I don't know. And for the ladies who are also John's lovers, part of the harem, just be happy what you and John had when you guys were together was special to you guys. That's all you need to worry about. Quit harassing me on John's uh, fan sites and stuff like that. Quit acting like you're the only ones... Quit reaching out to scam me to bars because you want to form an I Hate Allison alliance with her. I think I didn't see that. I saw that. Was that Cheryl or the chick from New York City? There was some chick from New York City that was, yeah, I saw that, honey. So you can hate me all you want because that's what your ego tells you to do. When be pissed at John because he was the one lying to you, not me. And he didn't lie to me because no need to. He knew I wasn't going to get some huffy little princess attitude and be pissed off. He knew I had other lovers. I knew he had other lovers. You guys shouldn't have been so thick in the skull to think you were the only ones. So, all right, you guys. There you go. That's what I think of this book by Paul Rees. Kind of a fairy tale. Like other books we know from that era. So, buy it if you do want. Because there are some good truths. There are some good stories in here. But if you do buy this book, if you read this book, Who Fans, know that it is not true on several parts. Not just about how John and I met, not just about the night he died, but about friendships. And like I said, there was a reason that Cy and Peter and Roger chose not to partake in this book. So take with a grain of salt. There you guys go. So I hope you enjoyed my little babble about another rock and roll memo memoir. Memoir. I can never say that word right. So, but here's the one with the full story about certain things in the book. They kind of interconnect to each other. So read one as a companion to the other. All right, you guys. Again, thank you so much for tuning in, for listening, for the love and support, for helping me keep going. I still have a vlog about... The future of this channel to follow up to the first one that I'm going to talk about. So I kind of really want you guys to understand where I'm going and why I may be absent for a little while. All right. So, all right. Thanks again for all the love and support, you guys. We'll see you next time here. Cheers, big ears.